Good evening. My name is Gary Callahan. And today, we'll be talking about Sean Hills. Now, you may be asking yourself, what is a Sean Dell? Well, that is what I am here as a CFI applicant to tell you about today. Sean Dell is essentially a maximum performance climb. And when would you use a Sean Dell? Before we get into the setup, as well as the maneuver, things like that, before we get into the setup, Let's say you're flying in mountainous terrain. You got a mountain to the left and a mountain to the right, and one in front of you. Your climb gradient isn't sharp enough to make it over the one in front of you. What do you do? Well, you know the area where you came from doesn't have mountainous terrain because you came from it, right? So you want to use a chandelle, which essentially gives your maximum performance to climb as well as turn to your 183 point, or pretty much turn around and climb the most altitude possible. So how does this look? First, let's get into the setup. First thing with your setup that you wanna do is to select your altitude, as with any maneuver. Now this isn't a ground reference maneuver, let's say, which has an altitude of 600 to 1,000 feet AGL, but it does have a minimum altitude you can go to, which is 1,500 feet. AGL. Now, for the sake of Middle Georgia, we have field elevation of about 303 feet. So the minimum altitude to start a Shondell would be around 1,800 feet MSL. For me, however, I'll start from 2,000, anywhere from 2,000 to 3,000, because you can incorporate a Shondell into other maneuvers. Remember, it's a maximum performance turn and climb which means you will be gaining a lot of altitude really fast relative to your plane. Our planes climb really slow as we do with Piper Archers, right? So what I like to do with that being said, is start at about 3,000 feet MSL and climb up, Shondell up to 5,000 to let's say transition into our steep turns. But like I said, we're talking about Shondells today. So we went over what they are. Let's go over how to set them up. Like I said, select altitude anywhere above 1,500 feet AGL, and brief your passengers if they're on board. This would be briefing your co-pilot or people sitting in the back, back seating. But you wanna make sure everyone's on board before you start a maximum performance climb, because it can really throw people off, make people nervous, or in a very worst case, freak out. After you brief your passengers, you do what I like to call the three C's. You start with your checklist. So in our case, we have a before landing checklist. Essentially all you do is make sure that your fuel pump and landing light are on. Those are really the only things that are moving. If you have flaps, I don't know why you have flaps um, transitioning out of cruise flight into a Shondell. But a Shondell, you do a checklist. You wanna make sure the plane is configured in a clean configuration, right? That's not another C, that's just part of the checklist. So no flaps, and since we are flying a Piper Archer, we don't have retractable gear, so the gear is gonna be out, right? And then the second C in the three Cs is to communicate. So we've done our checklist, we have communicated, MGA traffic, 267, doing Shondells, starting at 3000. Say where you're at and what you're doing, right? Make your traffic call, because Shondells, and to gain a lot of altitude in the same spot and somebody's flying, cause a mid-air collision and that's not favorable at all. And then the last C would be um, your clearing turns. We all know how to do clearing turns, but essentially you turn to the left 90 degrees and then you turn to the right very gradually and you have both people, if there's two people on the plane, so there usually is with training flights, you have both people in there um, looking, one looking off the left side, one looking off the right side, pretty much viewing everything you can because the traffic map doesn't always have your traffic and people aren't always making calls. So you gotta make sure there's no recreational sport pilots doing their thing. Crop dusters can come out of nowhere. You just wanna make sure the area is clear. After that, even though we do have avionics for direction, you wanna select your point. And the Piper Archers have very favorable viewing angles. So maybe it's just a matter of banking your plane a little and looking straight behind you and seeing what that 180 degree point is. 
let's say you're on a heading of zero or north, you want your 180 degree point to be 180. So you would not only bug that inside of your, um, you would not only bug that on your HSI or your magnetic compass, whatever you're flying, you'd also look and have a visual point because the most favorable thing, and this is just opinion, to do any maneuver is to always be looking outside. You can do every maneuver strictly looking outside. If you've heard of eights on pylons, you can even do that as well, looking straight outside, strictly outside, and be in standards. But once again, we we're talking about chandelles. So let's get into the chandelle. And what is the first part of a chandelle? So like I said, we're coming in, um, we've cleared the area, and it might be hard to see on your screen, but essentially I'll explain everything and then the picture will kind of build upon itself. And this is taken straight out of the airplane flying handbook, which is free and it's online if you need to use that. But you want to start at about the maneuvering speed for our planes. It's, it can fluctuate, right? Maneuvering speed can fluctuate. So it's around 108 to 110 usually. So about 2400 RPM is what I usually set it to. Is when you're starting, you already got your point behind you and you know what you're doing. Um, you selected your altitude and you're ready to go. On the very first part of the turn, what you want to do is engage full, the, the very first part of the turn, Paul, is you want to first, very first thing, the first 90 degree part of the turn, as you'll see, you're banking 30 degrees and you're not really adjusting pitch until you get to that constant bank. Bank 30 degrees, apply full power, and then you start to pitch up. So the first 90 degrees of the turn, as we can see here, is to constantly be increasing pitch, but holding your bank at 30 degrees. That is the first 90 degree point of the turn. And so how does this look on your um, artificial horizon, right? Because you're adjusting pitch, and while you can look outside, which I do recommend, usually holding about 17 degrees of pitch up attitude at full power will bring your um, airspeed down to near stalling speed. And as you get to this um, 90 degree point, as you're turning, your airspeed wants to be very low, preferably under 76 knots. After this first 90 degree point, we go to um, transitioning into rolling out and finishing the chandelle. After that first 90 degrees, you will start to decrease bank very slowly and holding the same pitch, holding that similar or the same airspeed, right? Because that 17 degrees of pitch, like I said, will give you that maximum performance, but it will eventually make you stall. So you have to adjust pitch. So remember, in a sense, we're in the region of reverse command as you're coming around. So you might wanna pitch down just a tad to get that airspeed around 65 knots. And if the stall horn's going off the whole time, that is actually a good place to hold it. And it says, um, that's actually the recommended, I believe it's in either the PTS, no, the commercial ACS or the airplane flying handbook. You wanna have that stall horn going off because that means you have developed your maximum performance if the first part has been done correctly. So like I said, first 90 degree point of part of the turn, you are holding constant bank, but increasing pitch. And then right when you get to your 90 degree point, which I don't believe I mentioned, right? Because we had that 180 degree point behind the plane, but we also need to put, pick a point, um, either the left or the right, 90 degrees, whichever way you're turning, right? And whenever you get to that point, that's why I said you can do this entire thing visually. As you roll out to your 180 degree point, that's why you have to decrease bank very gradually because if you decrease it all at once, you'll be gone off on the wrong direction and you won't be able to finish the turn. So very, very, very gradually decrease the bank until right when you come out straight and level, you're on that 180 degree point. I know it's kind of hard to orient yourself to what I'm thinking about, but essentially it's a 180 degree turn. It's not that hard um, to visualize in your plan. YouTube and things like that, which this will be on YouTube, there's plenty of things that help out, but it's very, very simple. As you roll out and as your wings come level, you wanna hold that pitch up around 65 knots. If the stall horn's going off, that's great. You hold that for about three seconds and then you slowly pitch over to straight and level flight and then pitch power trim, transition to cruise flight, and then you have successfully 
completed the maneuver. So what are some standards from the ACS? Well, really the most important one, and probably one of the only ones that has a numerical value to it, is to roll out within 10 degrees of the desired point. So remember, if we were on a heading of north and we wanted to turn to a heading of 180 degrees, we need to roll out within 10 degrees of 180 degrees, so 170 or 190, that should be our rollout heading. Um, and like I said, just above stall speed. If you're just above the actual critical angle of attack, stall speed of the airplane, your stall horn should be going off, regardless, right? So those are really the standards. And as with any commercial maneuver, strive and strive to do this as smooth as possible. You got me? So what are some common errors, right? Because we, I just told you exactly how to do it. But there are things you can consciously avoid that will actually make you better for the maneuver. Like I said, we're focusing first part of the turn, constant bank, changing pitch. And then the second part of the turn, changing bank, constant pitch, right? And that will achieve our maximum performance. But there can be improper bank or pitch, like um, pitching up, and then banking for the first part of the turn, right? It's bank first and then pitch. If you want to do it as the FAA wants you to and not fail a check ride. Improper bank, like I said, could be rolling out of the turn way too fast. And if I want to turn here and I'm already rolled out here, there's no way I can get over there without turning again. And that's not smooth, right? We want to make all these turns very, very smooth. Another one is improper rudder. At high or at low air speeds with high RPM, right? That's going to increase or left turning tendency by a landslide, or if we're going right, whichever way we're gonna have, um, whether it be adverse yaw, P factor, torque effects, whatever it may be, those will come alive in this situation because we are going so slow since it is a maximum performance maneuver. So rudder comes in very, very clutch. And I haven't mentioned this yet, good thing I'm mentioning it now, is whenever you do this maximum performance maneuver, your ball, whether you're turning left or right, will go left or right. The ball or the inclinometer as it's more specifically called. So you need to step on that, right? You need to have a coordinated maximum performance climb because not all the time, and it's rare in trainer airplanes, this can lead to a cross controlled stall and even a spin. And we don't want that. It's very rare, but just be aware of that because a lot of people don't plan on getting into spins until they get into one. Another one is failure to achieve maximum performance. And what can this look like? Um, I'd say it could look like an R Piper Archers that have a stall speed of around 60 to 70 knots, depending on your angle of bank and other factors. Um, being at point C at your 90 degree point at 90 knots, that would not be maximum performance. Because remember, when we pitch up and climb, our airspeed's gonna reduce. So if we can smoothly do that and our airspeed's being reduced, and that means we're getting better performance. But if your air speed's 100 knots during this whole turn, you're not gonna be climbing well at all. Like I said, with the cross-controlled stalls, a stall during the maneuver, that would fail your check ride, right? You don't want that because that means you don't really have authority over the aircraft. Maybe you don't know what you're doing. Um, and especially if you get to a spin, you will be deemed unsafe and definitely failed if you recover in that time. So a stall during the maneuver is very rare, but it has happened, I bet. I don't really know of any examples. And the last one I kind of mentioned, proper correction for torque effects, and that's um, done with your rudders. Um, wrapping up, I would say with Shondells, these are an easier maneuver on the commercial check ride. The harder ones, of course, being Lazy 8s um, or 8s on pylons, right? Which need to be more first precise. But with Shondells, these really emphasize how smooth you are with handling the aircraft. Your turns and your pitch and everything. If you can truly just come out during the check ride and Shondells are some of the first things you do, if you can just come off and do them smoothly, it'll set a good tone for the rest of the check ride. So don't blow these off because they're easy. Truly try to perfect them to the best of your ability. But thank you for listening to my presentation. I'm Gary Callahan, and have a great day.